Hello and welcome to yet another episode of the CNBC TV 18 Market Cafe. I'm your host, Surabhi Upadhyay. Remember, this is our show. It's a digital first property and it's a show where we talk markets, we talk money. But we do that with a little bit of ease. We take a deep breath. We step outside the studios. I'm not in the studio right now, as you can see. We sit down, grab that cup of coffee or tea, whatever our guests like, and really go in for an in-depth conversation. But as I said, at ease. Remember, uh, in the last episode, you heard from Gautam Dugar of Motilal Oswal uh, Institutional Equities. Gautam is someone who's uh, sort of very deep into institutional equity research and he gave us some great insights about uh, the connection between stock markets and elections. If you haven't caught that episode just yet, I suggest you go on our YouTube channel and do so right away because there's some very interesting uh, sort of stocks and sectors that he speaks of as well. Now, today we speak to you at a time when the market has finally touched that milestone. 20,000 on the Nifty has happened. The question that a lot of people have on their minds is what next? I will buy stock, I will not buy stock, I will do profit booking or mutual funds. Should I add more, stop my SIP, continue my SIP, buy more PSU? What to do? And there's always that fear, right? That fear of highs, heights. That, oh my God, all time high. Will this market fall now? Today, our guest on the show, the person that I'm going to speak to, uh, has been doing this for over 25 years. He's got so much experience and you probably know him already. I'm very certain of that. He needs no introduction. But anyway, let me tell you about him anyway. Uh, my guest on the show is Nilesh Shah, the MD of Kotak Mahindra Asset Management. Nilesh, it's a pleasure to have you with us on Thank this you. show. Thank you. This so is your me. debut edition of the CNBC TV 18 Market Cafe. Thank, Thank you for joining in. My pleasure. So, uh, welcome to the office. Today, as I told our viewers, I'm not taking you to the studios. Are you okay with that? I'm fine. <laughs> I'm not going to ask you about the stock ticker, about what is happening with the Nifty now. None of that is happening today. Thank it works, you. Works, works. <laughs> <laughs> it but, works. But, uh, you know, the effort is to try and humanize, you know, the stock markets and the way we cover them because I firmly believe uh, that it, it's, it can't be rocket science. It's money that you're you know, trying to build a wealth corpus over a long period of time. So it can't be that difficult, right? The market is all about common sense, which is unfortunately <laughs> not so commonly available. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. But you know, before uh, we get started and before I take you to the cafe and we'll sit down, um, I know a fair amount of this, but I want our viewers to know as well your journey and 25 years plus with the, with the Indian capital markets, right? Yes. And uh, a huge period of that with, I think, uh, Kotak Mahindra. Yes. And before that, I think even with the ICICI group. So I s started my career in ICICI group, lucky uh -huh. to be groomed over there. Uh -huh. And then traveled to Templeton and Excess. And that and was the, the, the early 2000s. I'm just trying to understand the, the map of the country and the economy also yes. back then. So I came in a market where... Uh, you know, there were words like Jota, Fata, Patawat, Wando, <laughs> all kinds of things. Even I don't know what they mean now. <laughs> I have seen markets getting shut down because of payment crisis. Uh -huh. I have seen brokers always selling at the top of the, uh, buying at the top of the market and uh -huh. selling at the bottom of the market and calling it officially, uh, you know, Wando or uh, Buying Mandalo. at the top and selling at the bottom, huh? <laughs> yeah, no matter what you sold, it was always at the bottom of the day. And no hmm. matter what you bought, it was always at the top of the day. Uh -huh. And this was officially known as Garo, the okay. difference. Oh, So from the Wild West to come <laughs> to this market where everything is electronically settled, I think the regulators have done a great job in uh -huh. safeguarding our market. I think, uh, and uh, you know, you folks have played such a huge part in educating investors, I think that much common sense everybody has that you don't sell at the top, uh, you don't buy at the top and you don't uh, keep selling when there is a bottom. We need to do the reverse. We know that much. The question is, how do we do it? How do we, you know, how do we prepare ourselves for these bottoms and these tops? Because we don't know, you know, what is what. So one is the financial awareness. Uh -huh. Moment you realize that it's difficult to capture the bottom or the top, Hmm. You are aware about it and then you don't start ch chasing it. Mm -hmm. The second thing is a simple tool of systematic investment plan. Today, there are more than 15,800 crore coming by, by way of SIPs. That's the last monthly number. Of phenomenal. Yeah. There are a host of people who have built their financial security through SIP. Hmm. I think India is a rising tide. Every boat here will get lifted unless until they have a big hole in hole it. Hole in the boat. 
and just do SIP that mm -hmm. will provide financial security. Okay, that's lesson number one. Avoid boats that have a hole in them. <laughs> you need to be aware of how to identify those boats. Okay, um, before we get started on you know markets full throttle and uh, you know we have to take you to our cafe. So please tell me what is it in your usual day? What is it? Are you a green tea person, coffee person, water person? So normally I tell the host whatever is best in your place, give it to me. Oh, okay. And that has worked well. <laughs> I can drink green tea, I can drink black coffee, I can drink cappuccino, I can take masala tea. Mm. And moment you put the onus on the host, it's, it's give me the problem. best. You know, they deliver the best. <laughs> you know, okay. So, I mean, I think I'll go with my choice. I'm very much a coffee person, especially when I'm in a good mood, which I am with, with your company. So I'm going to get you cappuccino. Does that work? I'll join in. Okay, let's go. Cappuccino coming right up and we get our conversation started. <laughs> Please have a seat and coffee will be served shortly and I can assure you it will be a good coffee. Because I've had it before like you said, right? The onus <laughs> is on me. So therefore. So Nilesh, uh, you know, tell me how has it been these last couple of days, uh, this 20,000 euphoria, you know, just ahead of Ganesh Chaturthi, the festive season in Diwali. Uh, what, what's the buzz? Uh, how are you guys feeling? Happy and excited or a little overwhelmed because expectations are, I'm sure, rising higher? So I think we are a little bit overwhelmed. Okay. There was a time when we used to tell and, you know, request people to be bullish on India. Growth story of India <laughs> is good. Now it's the other way around. People tell us that don't get bearish. India growth story is good. Is that a worrisome sign when investors are so euphoric and, you know, I think everything is gold. So, I think this time there is Triveni Sangam of flow, sentiment and fundamentals. Flow, sentiment and, and fundamentals. And fundamentals. That's good to know. Uh -huh. Our earnings are growing at about 1% every month. Mm -hmm. So, it's not that fundamentals are way behind. Mm. Domestic and global, both investors are willing to buy. Mm. And sentiment towards India is like Birbal ki kahani. Hmm. We have done well, but others are doing badly. So, our line looks bigger. So, with this combination of flows, sentiments and fundamentals, I think investor confidence is justified. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There you go. Please, please see. Check it. I'm sure it is good. Why don't you take a sip and then, and then we'll decide. Yes, it's All a well? good coffee. Okay, great. Well, cheers to that. Yes, so, sorry, you were saying. Please continue. So, this combination of flow, sentiment and fundamentals do justify investor confidence. Now, given that you yourself sound uh, fairly optimistic, even at these levels, I could ask you about uh, the five things to buy. But today, as I said, the topic is the five things to not do in this market. I, the reason I'm asking is maybe one of those five things can be... Uh, don't not participate or don't don't sell. That could also be one of the things. But you tell me at 20,000, the five things investors should not do in this market. So first, don't think last six months will get repeated in next six months. Okay, keep your expectations, expectations a little anchored. Expectations moderate and low. Last six months was luck. Now you have to make money on your skill. Okay. Second, That's an important one, guys. Did you hear that? Please hear him again. He's saying last six months were luck. And the next six months will be it skill. Will be skill. Your skill, your fund manager's skill, basically pay attention. That's the first lesson. Okay, please continue. Second, this is not the market where I'll recommend people to leverage. Okay. Leverage returns have been fantastic in last six months. Mm -hmm. But now, not the time to leverage. Mm -hmm. Third, this is time to clean up your portfolio. Mm. So don't buy kachra stock, buy quality. Okay, so I'll just repeat, going a little slow. Second is don't leverage, basically don't borrow money and then invest it in the market. Uh, and the third is it's time to do house cleaning. House cleaning. Kachara saaf karo, sabhai, Kachara safai saaf saaf abhiyan before Diwali. Absolutely. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> Bull market mein sare paap dhul jate hain. So this is time to clean up all your non-quality stocks. But, okay, on that, do you think that in this rapid rise, right, March onwards, April se sari kahani polat gai. The moment this financial year started, do you think people or funds for that matter have accumulated kachra? I mean, has there been an issue of quality in, in this rally going up to 20,000? So, we have learned our lessons in 2000 and 
by and large avoided kachra stocks okay. but in the market there are many stocks which have run up way mm. ahead of their fundamentals mm. second the valuation also one will have to keep in mind yeah. today lot of people are buying what is moving fast yeah. i think it is time to look at valuation don't buy things based on tips yeah. buy based on your conviction yeah. because when markets correct it's your conviction which will allow you to hold on to those stocks okay so number 1 keep your expectations realis- realistic last 6 months won't repeat exactly in the same way in the next 6 months do not borrow money and then invest in the market right now and third it's time to clear the kachra that's three now fourth do your research and invest not just follow someone's tip so the f- the fourth thing is do not follow tips absolutely okay. on social media there is explosion of tips Ah, oh, please oh, yes. stay away from oh, it. Yes. <laughs> Other than your parent, no one is interested in making you wealthy. So please, you know, don't get trapped into tips. So do not follow tips. That's number four. And, and finally, you know, don't chase momentum. Uh, okay. A lot of people are playing momentum investment. Mm-hmm. Uh, people are going into F and O and trading. Mm. I think this is time to curtail your trading instincts. Mm. and take some profit out for longer term investments you know in fno trading a good friend of mine met me after many months and he said uh, surbi like there's no use having a friend like you i said why what have i done and he says uh, that yeah you are doing the stock market business you're covering it for years and years you've never told me you know are you into fno trading i have recently started and uh, tell me some ideas some strategies i said you know I, with folded hands i said my friend uh, maybe you are going to be the master here i never have never will because i never can understand that but it told me something relation really, that's where i got scared because he is someone who's a regular investor with a day job who definitely has money in mutual funds maybe has money in your funds as well but uh, we've also seen after covid this era where investors think they can become better fund managers think they can become better traders what's your your view on this a lot of it is because of the easy diy you know the, the zero discount brokerage platforms and it just seems very easy uh, what would you say to this trend because we can't wish it away it is real let's face it so one there are periods where there's a broad based rally in market and whatever you buy makes money for you mm. as a trader you feel that this is easy way to make money mm. but please remember 89% of people who traded in fno ended up on the losing side this is sebi's data right this is sebi's Sebi own research <laughs> and only 11% made money yeah if you are an investor 89% makes money 11% loses money do you want to play the game where the odds of losing are 1 is to 9 mm. or where odds of winning are 9 is to 1 mm. so my recommendation is that whenever you hear trading mm. do remember the statutory risk factor trading is injurious to ordinary investors financial health Okay so keep that in mind in case you are you know, feeling this compelling need to go out there and become this uh, you know new age trading maverick uh, probably want to keep some of those uh, sort of risks in mind as well so we've we've discussed the five things that you said people should not do and the fifth one was not chase momentum and nilesh here i think i i want your advice more uh, because i think that might be the hardest right now a lot of people say that the sectors that have started doing well in this rally uh these sectors haven't worked in the last 10 years right mm-hmm. we're talking infrastructure we're talking power we're talking psu stocks for heaven's sake i mean i in my career and i've been doing this for 15 16 17 years i never thought we'll see these kind of levels i mean the stock like ntpc has crossed its 2008 high i thought i will retire i thought my ntpc ki utni high kabhi nahi dekhungi but it has happened you know so there are people who say that uh you need to prepare yourself for what is maybe a you know a completely new blue sky territory for some of these uh, areas industrials psus but at the same time like you're saying we shouldn't get carried away with momentum so how to balance so one on the power stock we are mm. bullish the power utilization or capacity utilization has reached its peak and we are actually staring at a scenario where power rates will have to go higher mm. but on many psus we have seen that the floating stock is very very limited mm. there is no divestment supply mm. and prices are running up because there is no supply mm. tomorrow when the government begins divestment there will be supply and psu stocks will come down mm. so don't invest 
because there is momentum because there is limited floating stock invest because you believe in the fundamentals hmm. i'm not letting you have your coffee please please go ahead i'm you know asking for all of this uh, advice but then what to do i mean it, it's just that kind of a market what's the mandate like do you have a mandate that you give to your fund managers for instance if they're sitting on x amount of gain or y amount of gain or let's say if you know some of the infrastructure funds that might have done really well uh, is it a mandate that you have to book profits if you've done 50% chal gaya hai stock to aapko book karna hai how, no. how do you navigate this so i mean again playing momentum retaining the gains but yet also not getting carried away how do you apply that to your own funds so in our funds we take a longer term view never a shorter term view okay. and we move from a company to another company only when we believe valuations have become expensive on a longer term basis mm. and there are cheaper alternates available mm. see out of 500 odd stocks in the market about 100 odd delivers return so mm. your success ratio is 20% when you have got a winner why let it go you make money by letting your winner continue and yeah. cutting your losses most people end up cutting profit yeah. and letting losses that's, accumulate that's the hard part right realizing which is the horse you keep backing let absolutely. the horse run and which is the one where it's time to kind of get off and then you know absolutely